I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Today we're doing a story that I've wanted to do for years, but it really took me years to get all the pieces in place to do it. It's a story about Keith McNally, who's a famously shy guy. Doesn't banter to the press because he doesn't have to. Keith opened up with a bang years ago at Odeon, Cafe Luxembourg, Lucky Strike, Pastis, Balthazar, Mineta Tavern, Schiller's. He's got a ton of restaurants and they're all good and they're all busy. Today we're going to get inside Balthazar and Mineta Tavern and I'm really kind of thrilled. We are the first camera crew he's ever allowed in Manetta Tavern in five years of business. So, kind of an honor. So stay tuned, a rare look inside Manetta Tavern and a day at Balthazar. Shane, thanks for letting us in, man. This place is such a well-oiled machine because it, it's been doing this since goes, 1998, goes, goes and goes. You're open for breakfast at 7.30, yep. swing right into lunch, yep. stay open through dinner. Continuous service all day. On a slow day, this upstairs will do eight, 900 covers. On a good day, you're doing 14, 15. A good day, we can get close to 2,000. That's getting to tapping on the green numbers. Yeah. I know those numbers. Yeah, so in order to do that, we're downstairs now. It's kind of on break in the morning around 10, 30, quarter of 11. While we still have room and we don't have 50 guys taking around us, let's do a little walk through and okay. see the space yeah, we're going to These are duck legs for duck shepherd's pie. It's going to be Bernays. Got Bernays sauce over here. One of our sous chefs is uh, cooking the Klubiak right now for lunch. Daniel here is making our uh, Agnoletti. We make all of our pastas by hand. This is amazing. I know you're old school as it gets, yeah. but I'm like, with a restaurant this size, there's no way I thought you'd be doing pasta by hand. Yeah, we make it all. Every drop of the pasta's made here. Hey, Aaron. You're the GM at one of the top 10 busiest restaurants in the city. Your purview as the GM, and correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, That's so G that encompasses front of the house, back of the house. Correct. You're it. Mama. There's Keith, there's you, and then everyone else's sub. Correct. Insane. And how many employees roughly total in this whole? Roughly we have about 300 employees. And I would say probably about a, we've got 130 of them have been here for 10 years plus, if not more. It's a huge family. And if you took a poll of everybody here, you'd probably find a lot of people who are not studying to be musicians or not studying to be actors. This is what they do. Great. Love restaurants, love food, love wine. Yeah. This is it. Doors open at 7.30 and it's Absolutely. freaking showtime. There's guys downstairs making apple galettes, you know, retouching up the croissant before they come up. They live for it. This is Andy's room. Andy, Andy. Yes. how long have you been here? I've been here for 17 years. Since the opening, opening day? Yes. And every day you're coming in here doing specials, staying ahead of production. Looks like today's creme brulee day. Every day we make creme brulee, a chocolate cake. Yes. And we do like apple tarts. It's like a couple hundred pounds of apples at a time. Yes. So, so <laughs> this little space. <laughs> and yeah. chocolate sauce is like, you know, tons amount of chocolate we use every day. Yeah. <laughs> so steak frites sort of front and center for you guys. Yep. What cut are you using for that? It's top butt. Top butt. Yeah. Classic cut. We've got down here, what, lamb chops marinated? Yeah, those are lamb chops marinated. Olive oil, garlic, rosemary, old school classic. Bar steak in here. Which is, I don't know what that is. Tea tender. So that's if you sit at the bar, glass of Beaujolais, bang. If for my money, this is the best steak we make right here. You know, you always hear about the butcher cut or hanger steak. Uh, this is the one. This is where it's at. Man, I can't wait till I'm getting hungry looking at all this. <laughs> <laughs> Ingredient-wise, you're getting your meat from La I mean, We're not cutting back. All the stuff we get is the same quality that you would get at a three-star restaurant. We're buying good stuff. We're maintaining, like, excellent standards. You know, I think that shows in, in our final product. And French onion soup's like a classic. I mean, we all love this. We grew up eating this stuff, making it. It's one of the best soups in the world. So let's look at the soup. We'll put one together. So it's so kind of a two-step process here. The sous chefs or myself, we usually fill it up. He's going to put the bread, and then you'll see he'll take three air cheese, and then it'll go right in the salamander over here. And then we'll toast it up there until it's nice and golden brown. This roasted eggplant with a papanata, arugula, and parmesan cheese on a shavada bread. It's a great vegetarian light lunch choice. Roasted chicken, breast, and a thai. Spinach on the batter with uh, mushrooms and a spetzel on it. Spetzel, classic, man. That's a great plate of food. The hot line about this are, and basically the guys are cooking over here on this side of the line. They're assembling plates over here on this side. And these guys are all, they know the temperatures with just the touch of their hands. So good, it's incredible. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty hectic over here. And we're not even getting, we're not even really busy yet. 
All right, Chef, describe this for me. Goat cheese tart, classic. It's been on the menu since day one. Got a black olive tapenade, little salad with some oven dried tomatoes in it. Classic, like Pat Rosé right. crust. And then goat cheese apparai inside. Goat cheese and eggs and some cream. This is a classic. Everybody goes France, big in, big in Belgium. Everyone does their own version, yeah. but we're talking about great mussels. What are these? PEI, Prince Edward Prince Island. Edward Island, Island yeah. Super clean. We're gonna start with just a little bit of oil in the pan. Shallots. Got some sliced shallots and sliced garlic. Let them wilt a little bit. Next, I'm gonna put in the uh, the sweated leeks and uh, celery. I'll put the mussels in. Then I'm gonna put in uh, nice white wine. White wine. Nice clean, crisp white wine. No oak, preferably. This is Chablis. A little bit of chicken stock gives it a little secret. Uh, there we go. It vaults our secret. A little body. Fresh thyme. A little pepper. A pinch of salt. Mix it up one more time. And then we close it up. Now the magic happens. And this we're probably looking at a minute. Alright, so the muscles take a are peak. open. This is no secret for what's cooking. Lift the lid up, you see the muscles are open, then go some creme fresh. Creme fresh. A little bit of butter, a little nugget of butter, parsley in there. At the restaurant, we serve them in these big uh, casserole pots. You say classic. I got to dig in this, man. On a cold winter's day. Perfect. Yep. Steaming hot. Good glass of wine, pile of fries. Well, we've got a long day. We've got dinner service to do. Yep. We're going to head over to Mayo Tavern. Yep. Talk to the team that makes this possible. Thanks for the demos. You bet. It's done. All right. More work to do. I'm here with Arnold. So we're thrilled to come here and film because I know that this is access that really hasn't been granted to many people. But we're not going to stay for service because we're just too small. There's, it, in two hours, it's going to be three deep at the bar, yes. people waiting there, the door yes. opening and closing. You don't need two cameramen and me walking around acting like idiots. So the clientele, a mix of locals, tourists, all stars, the usual Keith McNally hat trick. In a certain sense, we're the smallest restaurant. Yeah. We're also at this point, we're the highest rated with a three star rating for the New York Times. And I'm a very enthusiastic three great stars. Review, great review. People um, are really wanting and very desirous to get in here. So for the most part, the amount of people that come here and come here regularly is huge. As a lot regulars. Of, as regulars. Yeah. And at the same time, it's almost extraordinary to me. People want to come in. They come in without a reservation. They're patient. They have a drink. And we reward them. We, we love the fact that people still feel comfortable, as popular as this restaurant still is, that they will come and we can get him a place, get him a seat. Pleasure to meet you, chef. Pleasure to meet you. Bill Brazile has been the chef here for a, a, you've been cooking this kitchen for five years and you've been yes. the chef here for a bit now. Opening chef to cuisine, executive chef now. Fantastic. It's a wonderful place to be, I love it. So what are you, what are you gonna demo for us today? A couple of things, three, four? Two appetizers okay. and a couple of main courses. Okay. Veal carpaccio. Let's start there. This is just a pasture Pennsylvania veal. Tenderloin, sliced thin and stacked and layered up. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a light coating of olive oil, a little fresh lemon juice, Fresh shaved so we have acid, shape. we have olive oil, we have fresh cheese. Red cow parmesan. Just shave it all over the top. What we like to do is uh, just chop a little fresh chervil right over the top. And then... Yeah, what and, then we, because, and then, <laughs> because this is Mineta. We like to put a little bit of fresh truffle over the top. Beautiful truffles, okay. man. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little sea salt on that. Yeah, fleur de sel and she's finished. A little fleur de sel. Beautiful, simple, the best ingredients. May I? Yes, please. I gotta get a shuffle on the first bite. Mm. That is going to make everybody happy that tastes it. It's like perfect. Talk about this room, because this room is so magical. It goes back to 1929. 1937. 37. When it opened as a restaurant, but right. it was a speakeasy before that. That's right. Because this place has so much history, and Keith tried to do so very little with the decor. We just wanted to clean it up. We didn't really change anything or add anything. You know, Keith is always so brilliant in the way he designs his restaurants. Insane. Like when we did London, to see him step by step by step by step, you know, they always say he has the Midas touch, but it's, it's the attention to detail, and it's, it's, you know, it's getting it so he thinks it's what it should be, and, you know, he knows what he's doing. So for us to acquire a space like this that people know is real, they have a connection over many, many years with the space, and that really moves people. You know, it's really nice that we serve such high-quality food and provide a really nice welcoming service in a place that's got so much history behind it. First of all, I mean, these are sick marrow bones. Yeah. They're huge and they're perfect. That's like the biggest cut. That's like the knee to the... That's a femur bone. Split in two. Yeah. Full of marrow. So we just gotta, just gotta lightly season these and then just crack pepper. 
We're gonna go right in. So this reaches over 700 degrees and things tend to cook pretty quick inside. So you can see they're charring up real nice. All right, so we have three bones charred, ready to go. It's fresh thyme, fresh parsley, a little bit more sea salt. Now, there's one final thing that you gotta do, okay? You're gonna go directly right over the top with all that beef fat. Because <laughs> that that's what so everybody good. loves. Yeah. That tastes so good. You know, if this doesn't get you going, you don't have a pulse, man. This is heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Now, without even cuts, two more signature dishes. Yeah. Roast chicken. Roast chicken. And that incredible piece de resistance, Cote de Boeuf. The Cote de Boeuf. So this is the rib of the cow. Yeah. Um, in this case, with the bone on, it's a Cote de Boeuf for two. You can see the size of it. And you can see the age on this, on this side especially. So, oh, man. Yeah. I love that. So we're just going to season this once again with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Well, maybe more than a little bit. This is a large piece of meat, so. I like to let the salt penetrate the meat a little bit, let it melt in, press it in. All right, so this is gonna sear pretty quickly. Now this takes a few minutes, but within a minute and a half, what you're gonna see is a pretty, excuse me. It's pretty, pretty impressive sear on the top? Exactly. That's yeah. nuts, that's been a minute and a half and you've got that much yeah, color. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, after the initial sear, we pull it out, we apply a little butter to the outside, so that's about good for right now. That's you know, beautiful. you don't want to overdo it. Same. And we're just going to let that rest, OK? So now we're just going to let that color compose, let the juices kind of recirculate yeah, again. exactly. Should we talk about this bird while we have a minute? Yeah, sure. I mean, roast chicken's such a beautiful thing. What do you have under the skin? Just a little herb butter, shallots, and then we place our herbs and a little uh, chopped garlic inside the cavity. All right, let's put this somewhere where it continues slowly, yep. and then we'll get to the chicken, and then we'll come back to the Cote de Boeuf at the end. All right, Chef, carve away. So I'm gonna take off the leg. And then what we do is we leave everything on the bone. So I'm just gonna separate the leg right there. And I, and I have the thigh. And we do clean up the bone just a little bit. We Bingo. pop it, okay? And that just gives a clean and nice presentation. Also right here, I like to trim. So what you have is half a chicken, which is right. what we're gonna serve. Right, All right? portion. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this in a pan. So the reason why we do this in a two-step process is just simply to finish the skin. Crisp it up. Crisp it up and add a little bit of flavor. So you have to be very delicate. You have to be very gentle when you place this in. The skin is very delicate. You just can't mess with it too much. No, just don't play with it now. Yeah. I think you see young cooks, the biggest mistake they make, or home cooks, is they put stuff in, they start to play with it. Leave it alone. Exactly. How hard is it to leave it alone? Exactly. You put it in, you don't touch it. He's good. Exactly, I'm going to check all my uh, steak, exactly. Okay. All right, Houston, we okay. got color. Yeah, now we need to let that rest. Because what's happened, all the blood, all the juices have run yeah. towards the middle. Exactly. And if you carve this steak now, it's going to be grayish black for this much. Yeah. And then as you get towards the bottom, it's going to be like purple and just completely inconsistent. Yeah, you would see exactly that. Totally raw in the center and then cooked on the outside. Ridiculous. So we're just going to let that slowly mellow out and even out on the inside. All that juice is going to run back towards the exterior where it really wants to be anyway, and it'll be a really beautiful pink on the way in. Yep. We're going to go down in the oven. Go down in the oven. And then this guy just needs to rest. All right, okay. we're out of the oven with the bird. We're out of the oven with the bird. We're going to add a little bit of butter. I have a little bit of fresh herbs I'm putting in the pan. We got garlic in that pan, fresh thyme in the pan. We're going to get that butter and move it around a little bit. Exactly. We're just going to pick up all the flavor from the esters and the thyme. Et voila, huh? And then we're just going to lightly flip it over. So you have crispy skin, but it's not beat up. We want it to look like it just came off the bone. We're just cheating a little by crisping it up. So this is the alley go. Classic. And the way to do this is to put raw cheese inside the potato and you're literally making the cheese, just like if you made a mozzarella ball or something like that. You have to make the cheese in the potatoes. And this is part of the process of making that cheese, is stretching it out. Now we need a plate. Cool. Yep. Now, a little bit of chicken jus. All right, so we're just gonna, Chef, I gotta do this. Oh yeah. I gotta dive in. Got a little potato. A little of the jus. Come on. I mean, that doesn't make you happy. Yeah. If that's not like satisfying on every level. The potatoes are crazy good. Yeah. Dark chicken stock. 
this beautiful char on it. Incredible chicken. All right, let's not overcook that cote de boeuf. One last thing to do. Yep, let's cote pull de that out. So, Felipe, yep. you're in charge of this, brother. God, they, the, the meat smells so good. Yeah. Something about dry aged meat. We got the bone with a little yeah. meat still left on it. This is ridiculous. I mean, that's just, that's such a money shot, it's stupid. And, uh, a little marrow fat, yeah. because why not? Yeah, because Maybe. why not? That's so freaking beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> There's nothing to say. That's like the best steak I've had in a hell of a long time. That's stupid. Behind this gorgeous etched glass door, which is obviously antique, probably flown in from France like everything else around here. And nobody can really see this, except the employees and maybe a customer too, because this is way behind the scenes. But anyway, behind this door is the backside of the bakery, one of the best bakeries in New York City, a little tiny jewel here. Let's go in and see what they're doing. Well, the bakery was originally here in the basement. And then they moved it to New Jersey about two years after they opened. And it's really, I mean, this is world-class artisanal pastries, sweets, and breads. Yeah. Talk to me about the summer breads. What am I looking at? So up here we have cranberry raisin, the tart, beautiful bread. Beautiful bread. Really? And we, we actually use all these in the restaurant, too. We have a rosemary ciabatta and a plain ciabatta here. This is my favorite bread that we do here. Yeah. Perfect for great sandwiches, breads, yeah. drinks up olive oil and We use it. tons of these for the sandwiches in, in here yeah. in the bakery. This is the loaf, just a classic country loaf. Cut across the top, you can see that little blistering from the heat of the oven. And then this is the classic boule, you know, the standard kind of French boule. And this thing goes in the oven, it rises, is it rising? This yeah, kind of pops cracks up, up pops yeah. open. Yeah. It gets, gets a little color because it's a little higher in the oven. This is the uh, the piece oh. de resistance here. Wow. This is the famous Levant. And you'll sell this by halves and We do, this is, everybody eats this in a restaurant. That's what you serve at the restaurant? We cut these by hand in the restaurant. What am I looking at here, Chef? Little tarts? Yeah, these are apple galette. We got some uh, sticky buns, which are incredible. Brioche de tete. Little profiteroles. Profiteroles that we make here. The scones that are made here. And on this side, we've got the croissant. We've got pain au chocolat. There's some cannelés over there. That's my... Uh... Oh, I love the cannelés. They're a little specially from Bordeaux. It's almost like a, a loose crepe It's a very liquid. loose batter. And then the molds are, are copper, and they're usually lined, believe it or not, with beeswax for some reason, traditionally. And then it cooks a damn long time. It does. Like 45 minutes. I mean, you'd think something like this would cook in 12 minutes, 14 minutes. No, 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 no. But the beauty of these is you break them open. It's light and airy. And you've got this incredibly light and airy interior that's almost custard-like. So you've got this crunchy, delicious outside that's all kind of caramel and that beeswax. It gets a little bit of flavor, but just tons of flavor there. And chew. Oh, man. You have to have the other half yeah. of this. This is so insane. I try to avoid these. All right. Let's get us out of here before we gain weight. <laughs> Too late. We've got stickle poivre, black peppercorn, white peppercorn, pink peppercorn, coriander seeds, a little sauteed spinach, and uh, the Balthazar French fries. That's way classic. You guys are famous for your fries. We've got potatoes waiting to get peeled, potatoes that have been peeled sitting in water. How many of these do you think you go through, I mean, just roughly? I think the last time I looked at it, it's like 5,000 pounds a week. That's crazy. 5,000 pounds of Idaho russet potatoes for French fries a week. Yeah. So we saw the potatoes over there get peeled, they get tossed into water. Then they go through this bad boy. Potato goes in here. It's a French fry production factory. And then these potatoes sitting in water. And you can see the water has changed color. That's the starch. That's All the starch should come out. We don't want that starch. It's not our friend. So we we also don't want the water, so we're going to shake some of that water out. Chef, what's the temperature of that fat? 300. 300. Yeah. About how long is this going to be, you think? Three minutes? Four minutes? Just shy of four minutes. And you see all that steam that's coming out? That's all water. That's what happens when water hits fat. It's going to shake them, get all that starch loose, make sure they don't stick. It's an extremely valuable station here. Everybody gets fries here. And a great fry is just a beautiful thing. One of the things that we do that really nobody, well, people do it, but you know, it's, it's not as common as it once was. We use peanut oil for both, both fries. We use it all the way here. It's very it's expensive. It's not a cheap oil. It's very expensive. You can see they're, they're just starting to take a little bit of a golden color. And we're going to pull them. Now we're going to allow them to sit. They can sit like this for a few hours. 
and we're gonna go upstairs. All the French fries that are upstairs ready to go they're already, are exactly they're already like this. Yep. Drop them in, the, that fat's gonna be 375. Yep. And they're gonna cook in a minute, minute and a half. Yep. So they're golden. That's French fries 101, old that school, is. man. That's it, man. Grilled Dorade. It's on some buttered cabbage with uh, roasted apples and chestnuts. And then uh, Dijon mustard burr fondue sauce. Over here is salmon on top of roasted Brussels sprouts with uh, some mixed mushrooms. That's a like a red wine feels you reduction on there. Salmon can handle it. Salmon's yeah. got the cojones. And uh, pancetta. So Frisée Lardon, classic. Classic. Can't Just beat it. Can't beat it. Yeah. Old school. Hasn't changed forever. I don't know what the hell invented it. Somebody's grandmother a thousand years ago. Yep. And to this day, it's perfection. Yep. Chef, right. start where you want. The first thing I'll do is I'll drop the egg in. So the second step is a uh, little olive oil in a pan. Get the lardon hot. Once the bacon gets hot, we have some shallots that we sweat it out ahead of time. And we're just going to put that in there. So once this is hot, I'm going to take a little bit of our vinaigrette and put it in here. And just get it hot. And then I'll take it and I'll drop it right in with the frisé. So I'll throw a little bit of parsley in there. We'll season it up, salt and pepper. Got some of our uh, house-made brioche croutons. And mix it up really nice. And then the last step is... Uh, last thing the egg gets mounted on top. Drop that right on top. Put a little chive on top of there. And that's it, that's our frisé salad. And that's a baby, and this thing just eats beautifully. You go in there, that egg yolk's just barely set, begins to weep out, creates its own little richness, the yolk runs around. It's kind of like you have two different dressings on there. Talk about this place, because you're coming, I mean, you're now you're a, you're a grown man. You're a chef in full. We've done the four-star thing. We've worked with Tom Colicchio, Craft Steak, great product. This comes along. Talk about what surprises, how adept you had to be, what you could bring, what you had to scale back on. You know that when I first got here, I, I was really impressed by the machine that it, that, it, that, it, that it is. And what I really thought I could bring was like a fresh breath of air into some of the preparations and maybe techniques. And what I realized was is that, you know, it is a machine. And I, and I always say it's like to change something here is like making a quick right-hand turn in an aircraft carrier. Right. You know, it just doesn't happen. The way that I got around that was instead of saying I want you to change it this way, I would change the dish and make it my way and then they had to do it the way I wanted to do it. So I had my own interpretations of what was already happening here. All right, we're gonna let you get back to the kitchen services visual. We'll keep that mic on you, keep it hot. We'll squeeze into that kitchen somehow and see some of the plates we missed. Congratulations on Thanks, all man. your success and always and being with this. This is just great. This is Klubiak. The outside you got some uh, puff pastry. Inside it's cabbage and rice with uh, spinach. And in the middle between the two, the two fillets here is mushroom duck cell. And then on the plate, we have a little dill cream and some more sauteed mushrooms. Lobster, tomato confit, and uh, garlic confit, chili flakes, and uh, fresh bread crumbs with Parmesan cheese and, and basil. One of my favorite dishes, totally underutilized fish. There's tons of them in the ocean. Inexpensive protein, delicious. I could eat this a day a week. It's my favorite. A lot of times I do. All right, let's cook. Just to start, we'll season it here. We'll do salt and pepper on both sides. And then I'm gonna dredge, I don't know if you can see the presentation side. This is the bone side of the skate. That's the flesh side. And then this is the flesh side. This is the side that we're gonna want everybody to see. So I'm gonna dredge that part. And that's the side that we'll put down first. We got a nice hot pan, the oil's smoking. You want to shake as much of this off as possible. That's the flesh side, that's the side that gets breaded, that's the side that goes down first, and the side that gets served to the customer. That's where you want your best color. You can almost see it. You can actually see it now cooking through. Yeah. See how that's turned color? It's gorgeous golden brown. Gorgeous. And you're literally just going to kiss the other side. And then I like to drain it on a little towel. You see this in really good restaurants all the time, Shane, yeah. right? We just Because the oil that we've just used in that pan was 430, 440 degrees. It's gonna pick up some slightly off flavors, could be slightly rancid, could it just, it, we don't wanna eat that, so we're just draining the excess oil off. I only see this in really good restaurants where they're serious about the food. So put a couple of knobs of butter in here to brown it up. Yeah, and they're gonna go fast. As soon as this gets nice and brown, we're gonna add all of our other stuff in there. I like to put a little salt in it, and then some lemon juice. I'm gonna just cuts the richness of the butter beautifully. A little bit of my uh, raisins, a little bit of capers, and then the pistachios last. Playing off the nutty flavor of the butter now. So to assemble this one, we just do the little bit of celery root. Take our fish. Right before I'm gonna put it on the, the butter on the plate, I'm gonna put some parsley into it so it doesn't uh, turn brown in the pan. 
Mix it all up. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. That's it. That's as simple as you can get, but it's full flavor. All right, let's get this guy picked up. You can see the skate's really flaky. It falls apart. Like we said, one of my favorite fish. Yep. Shane, man, we've been here for 12 hours. You've been here for 15. I think it's time for you to join, join us at the table or head back home. All right. Thanks for having us. Let's go get fed. Let's go get fed. Balthazar's the restaurant. Minetta Tavern was the other restaurant. Astonishing. Everything Keith McNally does in this town is solid. Everything. He has not missed a step in 30-some years, and I don't see that coming. Cherche Midi on the way. Cherche Midi on the way. Houston the Bowery. We'll be there when it opens. See you next week.